once we have um, a project created, what we want to do now, and we've, we've set up our kind of IOs, our additional modules, we set up the CPU, and we did that in a previous video. The kind of next starting point of um, creating a PLC project is to decide on your I.O. And when we say I.O. we mean inputs and outputs in your system. And it's always good to have a list of them out at the start to decide what you're using um, as inputs and what you're using as outputs. So in over here underneath the PLC um, 1 folder because that's what we've added in. And you can rename that if you wish. Um, if we go into PLC tags, what we're going to do here is we're going to create two tables, um, one for inputs and one for outputs. Okay, um, so if we double click on add in a new table, you see I've got a tag table one there, and I'm going to add in another one. So now I can right click on that and rename it, and I'm going to call this um, my input table, and I'm going to call um, my second one my output table. So when you're deciding on you know the projects you're going to code for, always good to have um, how many inputs and outputs you're going to use. So let's say if, what we can do here is we can start typing into a table. Um, we might have say a start button, um, that would be our first input. Now look what happens. So automatically it starts in um, with the address from the first available position. Okay. So if we look at the way they set up addresses, we use percentages to represent kind of a tag or a port that we're working on. I for input and then zero represents if I can sorry if I can just go into the device view zero represents the first module card okay and then seeing that it's 0, 0.0 it's referring to the first um, input port that we can connect into on the first module port 1.0 would be our next input module and again the first port that we can connect into. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, again it automatically comes up as a boolean um, so depending on what type of input you're using usually at the start we'll be focusing on boolean types so either on or off inputs and um, true or false inputs. And what we can do then is you know you can keep adding them in we're going to have a stop button let's say um, and that will continue to increment up. So again, that's the next available port in the first um, input module. Now it's quite handy as you can, kind of like Excel, you can drag them down and add in um, your, your tags. And you'll see they'll automatically increase. It's actually duplicated itself there once. So I might just, we're going to go ahead and change that. Um, if I overwrite them, pull them down again, there we go, that's better, better set up. And you'll see the yellow tells you that the tag was already used, so you can't have a duplicate address. Um, so you see it kind of increments nicely, and then as we get up, look, there's our eight inputs for our first module. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so zero to seven is our eight, and then it goes on to the next input card. Um, it keeps it all as boolean. It automatically kind of puts in some names here, which can be annoying or can be useful. I don't know. It depends on what you're doing. Um, let's say we can rename one. We'll call it a toggle um, switch. Always some good practice is to type in capital letters. Programmers like using capital letters. And also what we like doing is underscores as well. Um, so let's see what else we got here. We'll use um, let's say an e-stop, toggle switch, start stop button. Um, yeah, you know, that'll do us for the moment. So I can, yeah, we can delete them. Um, now that only kind of deletes it from my tag table. So we just got to be careful if we're using them values again um, that we may need to just edit them um, and rename them so that they're not still keeping the previous name. You'll see there in terms of your inputs, and with the brackets tells you how many inputs you have in your in your table. Yeah, we can do the same things with our outputs, and we can start labeling some outputs to so save a motor. And again, it's on off boolean type. Now look at the address; it continues on from your previous table, 
but I don't want it to be an input. I want this to be an output. So that's going to be Q. And we can start that back from 0, Q0.0. .0. Um, so we can have a motor. We could have, say, a buzzer. Um, we'll say, let's see, a green LED, red LED. And again, it keeps incrementing nicely, and Q represents an output. And again, we can see we four outputs there, and we could have put in a possible 16. Um, so that's just labeling your I.O. how you would do it. Um, you would create two tables. Just to label them earlier, um, the address is important because the address is the ports that we're actually going to be wiring into physically in the PLC. So I must wire my motor in um, to that output port. Because the PLC ultimately doesn't know what's wired into it, what's wired out it. It's just going to turn on uh, outputs based on information given by inputs. Um, so it doesn't really know what it's turning on. It's up to you to code that and for you to kind of understand that and context it. Um, so the addresses are very important in the sense of how you wire it up um, when you go to wire it. So once you, you kind of set in this, you know, you stick with the addresses and go with that. Um, there's no reason why the motor couldn't have been wired in at port 2. You know, that's just order I called them out. But now that I'm setting that, you want to keep those addresses. We've given them a name. So obviously it makes it easier to code. We don't have to constantly be calling these kind of addresses. Uh, in, we've got, you know, a more, um, I suppose, user-friendly way to call inputs and outputs now that we have these tags on them. Um, so they are they are important, okay, especially with the where they're wiring into wired out. That's why setting up your I.O. list at the start is very important. So um, that's how we set up our I.O. Um, and in the next video, we'll look at developing some code.